one of the best things about this show and how we feel, I don't know, power fantasy is like, the people beyond the gate are such savages that they don't even know what an earthquake is. So they're like, oh my god, the gods are, you know, wrecking, you know, the, the, what's, what's the, what's the word? The apocalypse is happening, right? But then, you know, fucking, each time he starts walking, just casually, oh, it's just like a four, like a five at a Richter scale. What's, what's the big deal? Everyone's like, you're not scared of the earthquake? It's like, nah, not really. This is one of the most, like, funny ways to make sure, like, the audience feels some kind of hype in a very interesting way. I, I liked it. It's very unique in game. I also very enjoyed bombing the Senate to let the Emperor know we're not to be fucked with. And the fact that we fucked the Prince up. But the Prince, I, I think... The Zolzan is not to wor be worried about too much. I think Diablo... No, Diablo is the guy from Sword Art Online. There's another guy, Diablo or something, right? That guy seems to be pretty important. He's actually a schemer. And the Emperor's overall plans. He says that Japan's weakness is that we care about people too much. But that's our strength. How is this all going to play out? Let's begin today's reaction. Dark Elf girl, Dark Elf. There's oil there? <laughs> like the most rare resources now. And the adamantium, right? The adamantium was mentioned. It hasn't been really revealed to the, uh, the, the green people just yet, right? But I bet the adamantium will come in very clutch. Maybe it's even more valuable than oil. Oh, it's an incentive for him to go out there. Yeah, good for us. I think everyone would be very happy. True? True? <laughs> What did he fucking say? Did he tell Chuka that your dead dad is actually, you know, across the border and he's there and Chuka's gonna be like, we gotta go there, my dad's there. No shot, right? No shot he would do that. That's crazy. <laughs> oh no, Tuka Luna Marceau. Did she, did she get confronted? Did we tell her dad's dead or what? what the, ah! He tell me he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> This is bad. Dad is dead. I'm Itami. No matter what, with the magic, can't do anything to fucking solve this. All right, just put her to sleep. Lele's specialty. Dark Elf confronted her. Yo, Dad, dead. Is she doing this in hopes that this will somehow lead to Itami saving, you know, her village against the fire dragon? What is this? Why would Yao just suddenly just confront Tuka like this? Did something happen at the end of the last episode? Did someone tell Yao to do that? I forget, is this a last minute desperation play? What's going on? Either this is calculated or she's just lashing out. He got turned into dragon poop, I'm sorry! That should do it. Yo! What's, yo! She's pulled the fucking eye out of coaches. She just broke Tuka down like a tool. Not gonna build her back up though. What the fuck? That smile though. She straight up smiled. She smirked as soon as Tuka. <laughs> Look at this shit. <laughs> Look at this shit, dude. <laughs> Tuka deserves the real thing, guys. The genuine thing. She deserves to know that her dad's fucking dead. We're having way too much fun at the classroom of the elite memes, man. <laughs> Straight up, I wonder, like, new, I'm sure you guys, like, my hardcore fans, right, we're well versed in the community memes, right, they're gonna understand, but, like, gonna, some people that don't even watch code gonna be like, what the fuck is going on, bro, when they see this shit? <laughs> So now for revenge, Itami will go slay the red dragon? Okay, okay. <sighs> she sounds like a fucking bitch right now. But at the same time, if you try to see from her perspective, she's probably so desperate, right? So like, I can't really get too mad at her, right? 
I'm surprised she hasn't pulled out the fucking adamantite. She has yet to show the rare resource that she has yet, right? It's a dangerous smile. This is fucking insane. <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is one hell of a fucking monologue. Oh my god, this is the most emotional the show has been! Okay, enough about giving the body! Relax! That entire scene there, that was crazy. That straight up might have been one of the best scenes engaged so far. What an emotional fucking like voice acting, the soundtrack, their face, the smile while she's crying, dude. This scene was fucking peak. The other prince, Diabo. Did he? Didn't Z didn't Zolza say like I'm fine with playing being the puppet? No, he said. I forget, did he say that he was going to try to contest father? Because the Emperor's goal is to put a puppet in charge and retire and then he can basically control from the shadows. But did Zolza ever mention that he actually wanted to like surpass? In the bed scene, last episode. Fox girl! Fox girl, okay, okay, okay. I, last episode I said, if this is just pure Stockholm Syndrome and like, if you're like truly just attached to him out of abuse, like you fucking deserve this shit. It's fucked up for me to say, but yeah. But now I'm starting to realize there's another puppeteers behind the screen. There's another puppet master that is orchestrating the entire plan. Oh my God, she is going for the fucking end game, huh? Bunny girl is fucking going all out. This bunny chief has planned from the beginning. She already saw how this was gonna play out. Holy fuck! So like, we're gonna revolt. We're gonna basically... The ruin of the empire. She's gonna go with it. We're gonna put him in charge and she's gonna whisper nice things into his ear and she's gonna somehow orchestrate the plan to basically the empire will fall because of the buggy bunny girl. Yo, this bunny girl? Oh, I, I didn't need to respect her game. I did not realize. I need to fucking respect her game. I thought that her simple plan was I wanna be the one to kill Prince Zolza, right? It's like, fuck this guy, he's abused me for so long. So when Kuribashi was about to finish him off, right? Fucking, the bunny girl came in and she saved him, right? But it's like, and at that point I was like, ah, oh, maybe she's the one that wants to kill him. And, maybe, and she, I bet she still does. I bet she still does and she will get the final blow at the very end after the empire has been fucking ruined. Because that's what her goal is. Oh my fucking god. She's a genius. <laughs> Smirk. <laughs> no, I heard some sound. I heard some sound. There's, there must be like an under bed fucking entrance. But I'm like, where the, were you just under the bed the entire time? I heard something move. Like, like some kind of door, some kind of secret passage. <laughs> the spy! The part-time job! The bunny girl, the other bunny girl in her tavern, the main, oh, oh, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. And, 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 and the, and the bird girl too, she's in it on too, right? Not the blonde girl, but the, 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 wait, the, the bird girl that was aware that the bunny girl had a part-time job. She was aware of it too, right? <laughs> this dude's so worth it's looking her fucking stinky ass feet because god knows how many how, how long she's been since she had a fucking shower bro <laughs> it should have been me let me lick too <laughs> you fucking degenerate <laughs> last legs leg he's only looking the upper leg sorry the lower leg oh my god True, that would be in your best interest, right? What was his name? Um, so other than Noriko, I think there was another guy. There was two people, right? But I think only Itami is aware that there's a... It's not Hikio. Holy shit, that's not food. There's, there's another person. Hiroki, right? Hiroki. But apparently, Hiroki died, right? Hiroki died in the caves. And there's another survivor, right? There's two survivors, but Hiroki has already died in the cave. 
and they are aware of Hiroki's existence, right? So, like, are they actually going to make the other person roleplay as Hiroki to make sure everything is fine? I don't know. Maybe Bunny Girl will fucking make, you know, the other survivor look like Hiroki and somehow, like, Hiroki will just, like, I don't know, get killed out of fucking nowhere. Is she a spy? Is she a spy? Oh, I'm going to try to assassinate Noriko. You think Pin? Pina would never intentionally kill Noriko. Unless she was dealt a hand where she had to make that decision or it's something even worse than that. Tyure could somehow orchestrate this? I don't know, but the plot just got so interesting. The plot just thickened so fucking much. Not only is there one Giga Brain in the form of the Emperor, which I still think is a Giga Brain, right? He's, he's taking a lot of L's, but I think he's still got it under control somehow. He, what? Wait! I bet the Emperor has already anticipated Tyure, right? Wouldn't it be crazy if the Emperor is so fucking ahead of everybody else that like he is aware that Tyuda is secretly, you know, controlling Zolza? I don't know, maybe this is all calculated too? You tell me flashback. You killed my father? What the fuck? What the fuck? So 20 years ago when he was in high school, his mom killed dad because she's mentally ill? Oh my god. And now he's gonna realize the sanity part, right? He's gonna see the mom and Tuka and how the mental illness kind of plays out. He's gonna feel guilty. He has to act now. What the fuck? This Itami flashback's fucked! <laughs> but you can help her now. He has to go. <laughs> Tosan! <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I'm not your dad, bitch. Oh no! He's playing it! <laughs> You probably feel so guilty. What's she gonna do? Fucking confront her? Tell her, tell her I'm not your dad. Your dad's dead. And she's gonna break down again. Oh, I don't, this is dangerous though. Because the more you feed into the delusions, I don't know, man. We're gonna have to role play now. It might be funny, but like, it's still so fucked up. The root of this is so fucked. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. This transition scene. Yeah, what and so the self-defense force fought. No, no, no. This transition scene should have says, and so Itami decided to role play. Spy! Spy! <laughs> if this is Konosuba, and if this is Kazuma, bro, and if the people saw him like this, the people will be like, oh, what the fuck? This piece of shit fucking groomed this poor girl and is now role-playing as her daddy? But, you know, this is gay. He tell me has a pretty good reputation, so I'm, I'm sure he's gonna get away with it. <laughs> so cute! Wow, shopping! Uh, wow, cakey! Oh, shit! This is so bad. <laughs> How old is she? They use... The elves just... This is culture. It's their tradition. It, it's their tradition. They just sleep naked together. <laughs> no, no. That's not the point. It's not the point of whether or not it's old enough, okay? In fact, this is the only anime context where being old here is fucking weird. Because, like... Well, if she was an actual child, right, a toddler, in, in, in like Asian culture, right, sometimes you might bathe with the child because it's a fucking baby, it's a kid, you know, there's a cultural thing, you know, it's, it's, it's not creepy, okay? There's nothing creepy going on. But like, if she is, you're telling me if she's old enough, this becomes fucking weird. Because I could see in the elf culture that maybe with the youngins, you know, the, the, the daughters are fucking scared and they want to sleep with daddy and it's, it's no, nothing sus. Nothing sus, everything is very normal, but, you know, I don't think she's a child anymore, right? So, mmm... Is Tuka's that down bad? Wonder if he's jealous. <laughs> Why don't we go to your fucking village where your dad's buried? I'm not your dad! 
Oh, this is bad. Stop feeding into the delusion. This is so bad, dude. Like, at a, at a certain point... Okay, time skip. At a certain point... At a certain point, like, we will have to confront her that I'm not your dad, right? And at that point, if she's fed into the delusion so much, the mental collapse could be even greater than, an, uh, than a scenario where we already confronted her today. Maybe by the time that we confront her, she's going to be okay with it. And she's going to be like, yeah, I always knew that you weren't my dad. I was just fucking around. That would be like a wholesome ending to this arc, right? We kill the dragon. She gets all the fucking memories back. She's able to, you know, face reality. And she says, yeah, I was just playing the entire time, right? That's how I hope this turns out. But I'm getting scared, man. Back to the Empire. Back to the Empire, okay. Wow. What a line. Yeah, the villagers die, but I'm talking about our people, dude. I, I'm talking about our people, bro. Fuck fucking villagers. Fuck fucking refugees, bro. Fuck, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's terrible. That's terrible for me to say. But um, the, 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 he's worried about his people dying, right? The military, you know, on the mission. I don't think a single of our troops ever died. It was a pretty clean battle. Ooh, Kurokawa. Kurokawa took a ship. I hope it's a thing, and I hope that maybe Kurokawa... Hey, you, know, you might not have a dad anymore, but you could have a mama and maybe a girlfriend. You could have a mama girlfriend, bro. Come on. Come on. Come, could, let Kurokawa replace the whole daddy thing. She can't be the daddy, but you know, it's something. <laughs> How does it feel to have a daughter that's older than you? How does that even work? It's an adopted daughter. By a lot of they have, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, how the fuck does that even work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she really likes Kurokawa, man. Hello. <laughs> what after revenge, huh? Revenge against the fire dragon? Make her feel empty? And then she realizes there's more to life than dead. Prosthetic leg? Oh, this dude! Wait! The Giga Chad that was in episode one or two where he was just like walking towards enemy cavalry fire. Everyone else is dead. Bro is just like, nah, I ain't gonna die here. I gotta get one shot in on these motherfuckers. He still shot that arrow, dude. This guy survived the fucking artillery strike. How the fuck? He's, he's got fucking prosthetic arms now, bro. Bro's a cyborg now. Because I got a role play as dad for my elf daughter who's older than me. Uh, the rich people do, I guess, yeah. Hmm. What are we gonna tell him? I got a fucking role play as a dad for this fucking elf girl that thinks I'm her dad? What? What? You fucking be the dad! Skipped. I don't even know if she wants the revenge. Does she want the revenge? I don't think... That, she's not acknowledging the fire dragon or like... The, the dad thing, right? I don't know. Would she even want the revenge? It would be cool if like... Tuka got like the final blow on the dragon. Like her archery skills, right? It would be cool if she shot an arrow and got his other eye. Because like the fire dragon is injured, right? Doesn't have an arm. Had an, had like an arrow sticking out one eye. It would be cool if Tuka actually finished it with like a snipe. <laughs>。<laughs> What does his heart say? <laughs> so like his brain is saying objectively this is stupid, but the heart is saying instinctively I gotta do this. What a wise man. I'm glad he's still alive. Bye, Tuka. Cap. And then what? And then I'll tell you I'm not your dad anymore, bitch! Bye-bye! Can we just return back when we were not role-playing? Wait, is this the squadron to kill the dragon right now? I thought we are just going to the Empire. This is just our squad to go to the Empire, right? This is not the dragon mission, right? I don't think it is, right? That's way too early. We're still thinking about it. 
And we're just going to the end part to visit, right? Yes, yes, yes. Imagine he doesn't come back. Oh. Wait, wait, what, 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 what? Catch me! <laughs> okay. What the fuck? They just ditched him! Tuka, I'm not your dad! What's he gonna say? What's he gonna say? Are you sure about this? You said you want just simple, just go kill the dragon. I know the the um, political, you know, uh, visit to the empire was probably important, but like, hey, at least we're skipping that. Let's just fucking go kill the dragon. Yeah, you're supposed to fucking play cover for us. No, Tuka was crying. And a dragon slayer. Wait, straight up, it's only gonna be Itami and Tuka going? No one else? We're not gonna bring Roy Mercury anyone else? What the fuck? How the fuck are you gonna kill the dragon by yourself, bro? Rory. Rory. can see it. I, I, I think he can see from the single. I had to carry the subtitles, but I, 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 I think he can see it from the single. <laughs> you want to come with? <laughs> What's quivering? <laughs> I know you're quivering, but where? <laughs> Cost what? Money? What? Well, oh, oh. oh, actual blood. Actual blood price. Vampire! Well, it's not a vampire, but, you know, quite often, whenever there's like a lolly vampire anime, there's always like blood sucking, you know, fan service. Right? This is kind of close. Kind of close. Contract! Also, contract! Con we are now. Have, we have a blood pact with the fucking apostle of God Emroy. Contract. What does a contract do? Can he like summon her? Does he get special powers? Does he get to fucking use the sight? What's going on? That's it? Your soul is mine? That's, that's it? So if we die, our soul becomes hers, that's it? I don't know how to feel about Yao. Honestly, her entire fucking speech in the beginning while she was crying and smiling, that was pretty epic. I'll let her pass. You know what? Yeah, I was just doing what she got to do. Follow your heart. That's what he was meaning. <laughs> and that's another episode of Gay Things Are Getting Spicy. And I think the best part of today's episode might have been Yao. Today's episode was actually so good. Even though it was set up, there were so many scenes that was so impactful, right? Yao's fucking revelation that she mind broke Tuka while crying and smiling. She's fucking mind broken herself, man. The soundtrack, the voice acting during this scene, actually so fucking good. Another amazing scene, Bunny Girl. Okay, the, toe lick, the, the feet licking was a little sus, but Bunny Girl is a mastermind, just like the Emperor. She is fucking smart. I don't know if the Emperor is aware of her intentions. It'd be cool if he was and he's allowing this to happen, just letting her think that she's in control of the prince, you know, but at the end of the day, the Emperor's like, yeah, I saw that shit was gonna happen. This is all still according to my plan. I don't know, but this is a very compelling plot line. Tude does not want the peace to happen between Japan and the Emperor because at the end of the day, she just wants revenge, right? She wants everything to burn down, and she's been playing this long con game. This fucking... She's been planning, scheming. Who knows how long she's been here? But, like, part of me kind of wishes that her revenge does go fulfilled. Like, come on. Like, fuck the Empire, right? So, I, I, I don't think we need to go all out war, but due to her, bloodshed is definitely gonna happen, and it's looking pretty interesting. And finally, the, the daddy roleplay was a little sus, but hey, we got a fucking reason to actually go out and, like, kill the dragon now. I don't know if our problem will be solved, right? If this dragon hunting mission will actually solve Tuka's problems, but it's like, it's better than nothing. And also, contract. She did say, only, like, your soul return to me if you die. What does that mean? Does that mean Itami could potentially die, the soul leaves, but it's still a soul? Could she then implant the soul back into a body? So is this like an extra life? Is there any other powers that comes from this contract? 
Who really knows? But that's it from me. If you're still here, if you did enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.